Okay, so this is a tutorial on the brachial plexus. So the brachial plexus is a somatic plexus formed by the anterior rami of C5 to C8 and most of the anterior ramus of T1. So the brachial plexus, as you can see, it originates in the neck and then it passes over the first rib, so you can see that here, and then it goes underneath the clavicle to enter the axilla. So we're going to take a look at some of the structures in relation to the brachial plexus. And we're also going to take a look at the basic layout of um, the brachial plexus. So immediately exiting the intervertebral foramen, you've got the parts of the brachial plexus which are referred to as the roots. So we're going to switch over to a diagram which you'll see over and over again. Um, and this is used to explain and demonstrate the basic layout of the brachial plexus. So this is a diagram you need to familiarize yourself and it gives you the basic a basic concept of the brachial plexus. So proximally here we're looking at the roots of the brachial plexus. So you can see the numbers on the right. So these number the spinal nerve which gives rise to these roots. So like I mentioned it, it the brachial plexus is formed from the ventral rami of spinal nerve C5 to C8 and most of the anterior ramus of T1. So these are called roots and then these roots um, f form trunks so C5 and C6 converge to form um, the superior trunk, C7 continues to form the middle trunk and the C8 and C T1 form the inferior trunk. So then next, each trunk gives rise to an anterior and a posterior division. So the superior trunk has an anterior and a posterior division, the middle trunk has an anterior and posterior division, and so does the inferior trunk, so a posterior and an anterior division. And then these, div these divisions give rise to chords. So you've got the lateral chord, the posterior chord, and the medial chord. So you've got roots, trunks, divisions and chords. And you'll notice that there's several different branches coming off the various parts of the brachial plexus. So you've got um, nerves coming off the roots, you've got nerves coming off the trunk, and you'll notice that there's no nerves coming off the divisions, but then you've got nerves coming off the chords, and then you've got terminal nerves. So I remember the roots and trunks by just thinking of a tree. A tree starts from the roots and then you've got the trunk. So the roots are the first thing of the brachial plexus and then you've got the trunk. And then a tree divides, so you've got the divisions. So you've got the anterior and posterior divisions after the trunks and then you've just got to remember that chords are at the end. I don't have any special way of remembering that. So you've got the lateral, posterior and medial chords at the end. So just coming back to the 3D model, we've got the I've dissected away all the additional nerves that come off the brachial plexus and you can see the basic structure with the roots, the trunks, the divisions lie under the clavicle which I've removed, so the clavicle would run um, between the sternum and acromion process of the scapula, and then you've got the, the cords further down, so d around here. So the roots and the trunks lie in the posterior triangle of the neck and they pass between the anterior scalene and the middle scalene muscle and they run posterior and superior to the subclavian artery. So you can see this posterior triangle here, so you've got the, um, the posterior border, border is the anterior part of the trapezius, the anterior border is the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid and the base is the middle third of the clavicle. So the brachial plexus, um, the roots and the trunks um, emerge from in this posterior triangle. So if I just rotate the model around I can just show you the, the anterior and middle scalene muscles. So these muscles attach to the first rib, so the, you've got the anterior scalene here and the middle scalene here. So the roots and the trunks run between the anterior and the middle scalene muscle. So then the 
brachial plexus then passes underneath the clavicle and over the first rib. So behind the clavicle you get the divisions of the brachial plexus, so you get the anterior and posterior divisions of the trunks. And then you've got the cords which lie in the axilla, so this region here, so you've got the lateral, the posterior and medial cord lying in the axillary region and they've got an important relationship with the axillary artery so they lie around, the cords lie around the second part of the axillary artery so this diagram here shows it quite nicely so you've got the axillary artery here and you've got the lateral cord running lateral to the axillary artery the medial cord you can just see here and it runs medial to the axillary artery and the posterior cord runs behind the axillary artery so just to illustrate the point about the axillary artery, let's just take a look at this diagram. So you've got the C5, C6, C7, C8, T1 roots. C5 and C6 unite to form the superior trunk. C7 continues to form the middle trunk. And C8 and T1 unite to form the inferior trunk. So then you've got these divisions. So each trunk has an anterior and posterior division. So the superior trunk has an anterior division which continues like this the posterior division goes posteriorly to form the posterior cord the the middle trunk has an anterior division which contributes to the lateral cord so this passes anteriorly and the posterior division contri contributes to the posterior cord and then the inferior trunk has a posterior branch which can contributes to the posterior cord and it's got an anterior branch which continues to form the medial cord. So all of the posterior branches from the three trunks go towards forming the posterior cord. So let's just draw on the axillary artery. So the axillary artery lies like this, so I'm just roughly drawing it on and then it goes up to form the subclavian. So the posterior cord is shown in brown because it lies it lies behind the lateral and the medial cord so posteriorly um, so just, just kind of fill it in so you can see that the medial cord lies medial to the axillary artery and the lateral cord lies lateral to the axillary artery whereas the posterior cord with its formed from the posterior divisions of the um, the three trunks runs behind the axillary artery So that should have given you a basic understanding of the structure of the brachial plexus and its location in relation to um, the other areas of the body. So you know that the roots and the trunks pass through the posterior triangle of the neck and then you've got the divisions which lie into the clavicle and you've got the relationship of the posterior cord to the axillary artery and the lateral and medial cords sitting either side, lateral and medial, to the axillary artery. So next we'll take a look at the various branches of the brachial plexus, the terminal nerves and the branches which come off the roots and the trunks and the cords.